Thanks everyone for coming. Um, of course, it's a very big honor to be here. Uh, some of you might know uh, this is the actually the first real exhibition uh, connected to uh, my project, the Masters of Pixel Art. And I'm uh, very happy to be here and uh, really a big thanks to uh, the Valpeke Museum for doing it. Uh, you might know me before. Uh, my name is Klaus Bidemisson, but uh, in this world, in the world of pixel art, I'm uh, more known as Prowler. Uh, I've been involved in pixel art more or less all my life. Uh, a couple of years ago, uh, I decided that, uh, or I came up with the idea that it would be wonderful to actually uh, gather and uh, present all the all the really best pixel art images uh, made in a book form. I felt that pixel art uh, has been uh, has not been given a proper treatment or the respect of the actual potential of uh, what what has been made. Um, pixel art figures in games and even movies, but as an art form, it has never been accepted. Uh, so I felt even uh, if a book is uh, not really so big, it was still a start. And I was uh, very happy to, uh, to m make that possible through a Kickstarter project. Uh, but let's talk a bit about uh, the graphics behind. Um, pixel art is uh, quite a special medium if you compare it to other classic mediums. Uh, you have uh, restricted dimensions, you have uh, restricted colors, you have res even uh, the machine sets the limits what can be done. Uh, therefore, it usually turns out in uh, a special aesthetics uh, that differs from other graphical art. Um, this was something I, I hope that I could communicate through this art book, other than just showing interesting pictures. I also wanted to tell the story behind the pictures, so the sometimes the, the problems or the adventures or the situations or, or the fun stories that surround the picture. Um, since I've been involved and active for a long time on various platforms, uh, various countries, various people, uh, I was very happy when I started contacting all these artists around the world that we were immediately understood what I tried to do. Uh, something that when you're active in a field of art that's not really defined, you, uh, it's really happy or a really a great moment when you can actually find a common playground to be displayed on. Um, some of my uh, some of my progress in the book actually came from the artist which I contacted. A lot of aspects, a lot of things I didn't knew uh, opened up to me and I was astonished by all the help and all the support I had from uh, both the demo scene, the uh, game art industry and, and uh, pure enthusiast. Uh, pixel art is uh, something that also maybe brings out the nerdy side in us or the nostalgic side in us. Um, even today, th this picture for instance, which uh, figured as a 
kind of symbol for this uh, <laughs> exhibition is not is quite new it's uh, only a couple of years old but it's an attempt where the artists are really capturing the old retro uh, feel of graphics back then and displaying it in a new form um, something that we subconsciously, subconsciously might remember or refer to as a game or experience or a moment which we might not actually experienced before, but it, it draws that, uh, that tension in your mind. Um, we will have uh, uh, time later for questions and uh, everything that you might want to know, I will answer. All right. But uh, back to my project. Um, in the beginning, I felt it would be really nice and really cool to have a book, uh, like a collection of what I felt was the best, and also images that could actually uh, stand by themselves. They didn't need to be copies of a famous artist. They didn't need to be uh, remade or redrawn or made for a game or made for a movie or something. They, they could be good enough by themselves. Uh, that was something I wanted to bring out. Um, later on, I realized that what I actually was doing, it was creating or, or, or presenting a new art medium, or kind of not new, but new to the art uh, scene the classical art scene, which uh, uh, still back in Sweden, they, they don't really grasp this concept yet. But I hope that this exhibition might be the first, of, uh, first uh, step in a journey that could bring out the, the real potential in pixel art. In in a by printing a book, it's uh, it's not just by clicking on button in on a web page and you get it. Uh, I've been involved in several uh, productions of book and printing matters before. I've been working with web design. I've been working with pixel art, of course, and uh, I felt that it was possible for me to actually manage this. Uh, and I'm happy that I, I had the knowledge and the connections and the possibility to actually make it reality. This is uh, just a shot from the printing factory uh, where we uh, produced both the books. Um, for instance, quality and pixel sharpness was uh, an absolute priority one for me. So uh, instead of making the normal resolution, I made this twice the resolution normally used for uh, printing a book. And uh, they were very happy to, to receive the largest uh, source file they ever <laughs> got for a book. Uh, it was about uh, uh, 12 gigabyte PDF. I don't <laughs> know if that says, but uh, I actually crashed their server when we <laughs> <started> <laughs> um, Every page or every section I uh, uh, checked, coordinated, and colored, proved on site. And uh, it was uh, kind of a magical moment to see uh, graphic uh, pixel art that you've been both that I've been grown up with from a late, like mid 90s until today, that are converted into a printed form. It was uh, beautiful. <laughs> and uh, the result uh, is uh, these two books. 
uh, which uh, got uh, uh, got successfully funded through Kickstarter, which I was very happy and maybe a quite good timing, uh, accidental timing, but uh, that the Kickstarter medium uh, jumped, presented itself as a possible way for me to actually do this. Uh, I could say at once that there was no uh, publishing company in Sweden that actually uh, got attracted to this idea when I presented it and I quickly realized that this is something unique, I need to do it myself and I need to do it myself in order to uh, ensure the quality that pixel art deserves. Um, yeah, let's just zoom in. And uh, I took the, the little bit of the chance just to make some extra side stuff as well, like uh, postcards and bookmarks. And uh, posters as well. All right, a uh, little about the computers and hardware. Uh, on display uh, in the exhibition is, of course, the main computers by Commodore uh, that has been the source and, and the technical placeholders or technical limitation words for, for the artist active in this scene for many years. And uh, unique for pixel art is that uh, stuff that was made back in the late 80s and 90s, they are still, they are still um, uh, as much, uh, as much, uh, what do you say? <laughs> um, they still use the same limitations and it's, it's still the same setting as uh, graphics and design made today. So I think that's a unique and interesting aspect of pixel art that no matter if you start today or if you did it 20 years ago, you can still compare and understand and relate to the graphics. And it's those limitations we still, uh, we still strive to recreate today when we make the retro designs. All right. Uh, I was thinking to maybe talk a little about uh, pixel art techniques, but uh, I'm not sure if that's uh, <laughs> going to too deep into stuff now. Uh, all oh right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, of course, pixel art can just be beautiful images and uh, retro feel uh, things. But as pixel art evolved, uh, there was uh, there was certain uh, kind of uh, tendencies or, or fashions or, or techniques that evolved and, and got became popular. Some died and some, some grew on. Uh, this, for instance, is by a German artist. Uh, and uh, what I find interesting here is the, the kind of uh, uh, cross-pattern different techniques. You can see in a, in a tree, in a stone, it's not just a plain depict stone. They, he actually uses the, the, the basic foundations of the pixel art and, and the angles in order to make an interesting pattern or interesting texture. Something that you, you probably wouldn't end up uh, creating using uh, another medium. So all these kind of tricks or all these kind of techniques are a part of pixel art. They, they become uh, a, a, some kind of uh, the, the 
a texture of a media becomes uh, a way that pixel art communicates. And just not the motive, but here is a nice image by Finnish artist. Um, it's uh, another great example of divering where uh, not just random checkers or, or patterns are used, but also uh, circles and other forms that uh, create an, an quite interesting and uh, different um, color flow in the picture. Uh, to mention also, this is made on a graphical mode that just allows two colors to be used in a square of eight times eight pixels. And it adds another dimension of uh, difficulty when creating an image. Here's uh, quite a new image where the artists are uh, deliberately reducing the number of, of colors in this picture in order to uh, expose himself to more difficult uh, challenge to depict uh, the motive. Uh, but still, I think that uh, the more, the harder this uh, <coughs> challenges get, the, the more close the art becomes uh, or carries towards the, the core and the, the spirit of pixel art. And I will end off showing an uh, image by myself where I'm, I'm of course <laughs> adapting a little here and there and uh, I also find it interesting to to uh, look at or or think about uh, photography uh, where for instance when you have a clear uh, depth of sharp sharpness in your photos but instead of blurring things out which are supposed to be not in the focus uh, I tend to or in this picture I, I try to do them more cubic and pixel art-ish, whether the things in, mo in focus are kind of getting sharper and more realistic. Um, I think there is a lot of potential in pixel art uh, for the future, and there is a lot of ideas and concepts and, and techniques that can still be explored and uh, and uh, yeah, test it out. So uh, I'm, uh, I hope that, uh, I, and I believe that pixel art will survive and carry on even without the being a retro, uh, retrospective art form, but also carry on on its own, own path. All right, that kind of wraps up what I wanted to say uh, as an introduction. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Yeah. And uh, now I think uh, if anyone has a uh, question, I will do my best to. Do you mind, Klaus, if we, if we start by introducing uh, or sort of Everybody who is part of the exhibition, all the artists, maybe, maybe we should invite them to the front uh, and they can give a bow and... and okay, so I, I'm sure these guys will also be, be uh, happy to answer your questions uh, and co uh, hear your comments after, after sort of classes lecture. So thank you, thank you everybody for being part of this and just, yeah. Thank you. I think it's nice so people, people see who you are. And I think um, 
depending on what uh, what uh, what the image is and uh, what the final destination is <laughs> for the image, uh, the working path is a bit uh, dif uh, different. Um, personally, I base my images starting on uh, on either uh, a sketch or a photo or a combination of both. Um, Uh, maybe, uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, pixel art is usually, you know, it's uh, have a uh, defined uh, size of pixels, a certain resolution. And uh, myself, when pixeling uh, for platforms like Amiga or uh, that type of destination, I use a software called Graphics 2 that is only working on a PC and um, I'm not really a Mac user but I know there is uh, promotion is the name of another tool that uh, I'm pretty sure that works on Mac as well and there is a free free program also on Mac uh, which I uh, it's think is called ED Indigo or something like this should uh, does that answer your question or should I uh, yeah, kind of, kind of <laughs> yeah <laughs> uh, I have uh, time lapse videos that uh, shows my my um, working yeah uh, that is also a <laughs> good question uh, <laughs> it is Emulating a CRT monitor is, of course, the pure, purest way of uh, emulating how it used to look back then. Um, for the book, that was rather a problem, to be honest. Uh, some images made on the C64 were really made in order to blur together. And uh, I made a compromise to actually uh, accept that blur, even if that's uh, not really how it looks, but depending on what kind of uh, hardware you are working on. Um, I would say that, I mean, it, it's a feature, it's a kind of a hack, it's a, something you did because your the equipment was so bad. Like that. Uh, it's not really something uh, I think will survive. <laughs> I mean, it's a, it, it's still uh, possible to to use that hack in, in uh, uh, for productions shown on uh, Commodore 64, for instance. Uh, but uh, looking at pixel art, a pixel art for the future, then uh, uh, that's that is not really important topic anymore. It, it's something very, very specific for those uh, platforms. And I uh, choose to, uh, actually I, I chose to, to print uh, the book with, uh, uh, without the CRT blurring on several images that were kind of made to emulate uh, some special colors like blue and brown were mixed into some something new. Uh, that was uh, a compromise I was uh, willing to do in order to, to make the, to enhance the sharpness of the images. Uh, I know it's, it's, uh, it's not really uh, true to the original monitor, but on the other hand, uh, very few people did have that equipment when the artwork was done. So it, it ma made sense to, to print really old pictures that were done for that, and which were only viewed and never remembered that, as that. Uh, but newer ones are uh, not really, yeah. It is not really for me to have an opinion of either way. Sorry for that long answer. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh, I have any problems with the mic. <laughs>
Yes, I do. <laughs> yeah, well, um, I have uh, uh, maybe I, I should repeat the questions. If so. She, uh, the question was if I have a own channel or website, uh, and the answer is yes. Uh, I have a Facebook page dedicated for me as Prowler, where it's not very much happening since uh, I might post like five, six times per year. Since uh, pixel art is not something I just produce in order to produce, it's more a labor of love when there is a need for something, for a, a demo, a compo, a, a small game or, or something like this. Or uh, I, there are rare occasions I find the inspiration to do something without the purpose. So that happens as well. <laughs> and uh, other is I uh, have the uh, Facebook page of uh, uh, Master of Pixel Art. That is more like uh, information and advertisement channel where I, I, I inform like things like this exhibition for sure well I, I was very proud to announce that but also if I'm um, have doing a seminar somewhere or if I'm just uh, posting uh, some photos or, or uh, example of the book so, I also have an Instagram channel where I try to post unique photos, so I hate when it's both are overlapping, so you see everything the same. So I try to be produce unique material for all channels. Well, what was the name of the Instagram channel? Uh, the Master of Pixel Art. All right. Yeah. This is a graphics two. That's a G R A F X two. It's uh, totally free. And it's uh, also the development is uh, cancelled, so this is the <laughs> final. But it, it works on Windows 10 and Mac. So, uh, and for me, the layout here, uh, like uh, another person asked, this is quite resemblant to the old uh, Deluxe Paint 2 and Brilliance on uh, Media. Plus, you can map your, your shortcuts. Uh, this is going very fast, but you can see I'm switching. Oh, no. <laughs> you can see I'm uh, switching colors here quite rapidly. <laughs> and that is in order to, to uh, uh, select and put pixels. Uh, I will uh, show you another. Hang on, one second. Okay, any more questions? This one. Uh, here are the URLs for the web yeah, websites and stuff. Uh, Facebook, oh, okay. Instagram. Uh, and uh, this, the both uh, two here, Pixel 1 and Pixel 2, that's just a little tip for you. Uh, it contains a zip file with all the pixel art images included in the books. But uh, uh, to be clear, that all these pixel art are freely, you can find them online. These, it, it, there are no copyrights or, or hidden or secret stuff here. It's it's just a matter of interest and uh, yeah, time, devotion for you to find it. And it's, it's all online somewhere. But here's at least a convenient sit with my selection from the books. Hi. Right. Uh, a very short question. The, the time lapse that you just showed us, um, how long did it take you for real? Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, I guess maybe somewhere between uh, 20 to 30 hours. So, I'm a very slow worker, <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> okay, maybe maybe some more questions. We have one here, and then a couple more, maybe. Uh, 
I definitely see um, there is uh, very much allied pixel art scene today uh, online. Uh, of course, it's not it's not uh, thousands of people. It's more like a couple of hundred, but they are really uh, really serious and. They uh, have uh, weekly comp uh, competitions where they actually set up their own rules and uh, it could be colored or uh, size based or, or something like this. Um, when you say uh, like triangle hexagon based, then um, yeah, I mean, you, you can take a Photoshop filter and apply that to make the to make such graphics. Uh, however, pixel art is, uh, I would say one of the definitions of pixel art is that it's made by hand. It's not artificially uh, created uh, using a filter or, or a, a some kind of uh, computer algorithm or, or something like this. It's, it's actually putting, uh, putting the pixels one by one, or by lines, or, or some tools like that, uh, but not letting the computer do the job for you. Uh, so that that is one. Uh, I would say, if you want to call it pixel art, you need to follow at least both rules. Uh, then, that being said, there are some different the definitions of pixel art as well. Uh, I'm going abroad now from your question, but <laughs> uh, it's, it's uh, for instance, this uh, community I'm talking about is called Pixel Joint, and they have a quite uh, uh, square-minded definition about pixel art. It should be like uh, really, if you move one pixel, then you the, the, the image should change meaning or shape. Um, I would say that uh, like this, uh, doing this kind of differing and this kind of patterns, they are not okay with that. They would not call it pixel art because it's no longer exact pixels. It's, it's more like I'm doing differing for the sake of making a bigger shape. Uh, so there is, uh, since there is no set definition of pixel art, it's up to us to create that definition. But I feel that by publishing these two books, at least I have uh, I made my statement on what I believe is good pixel art. Uh, yeah, if I understand you, like my where I'm active, or that was in a demo scene. Or, uh, yeah, well, like there aren't uh, exhibitions like in art that traditionally uh, often is. A lot of uh, that stuff gets shown at uh, demo scene parties, so it's quite different from the traditional art scene in that sense. So maybe you could just tell people like how your stuff usually gets first shown at what kind of happenings and yeah, stuff. Because okay. it's so yeah. different from what usually happens. Right. Yeah, well, it's... Uh, let me just kickstart the number one here. Uh, last one. Uh, yeah, but the demo scene. Uh, my stuff or, or my work uh, is uh, I usually present or, or take part in uh, parties that are either close to me or, or that are important to me uh, in the sense of uh, uh, being the platforms I, I can compete in or, or the places I can travel or, or that fins, fits into my my normal life. <laughs> uh, uh, one one uh, big party is taking place in Germany every year called Rubishop, and it's uh, it's a really a great place if you uh, like graphical design and demo scene and, and all this stuff. Uh, 
there is of course the uh, assembly party in uh, Finland, Helsinki, which has kind of moved away a bit from uh, traditional scene graphics. Um, and I guess there's a couple of more. And what is Zoo Party is one one thing. Yeah. They just uh, released some nice tools for for making like demos. So check them out. Zoo Party. <laughs> and there's uh, yeah, well, there's several ones like Data Storm in Sweden and, and uh, a couple of more in Germany and UK. Uh, but pixel art in general outside the demo scene uh, I would say that it's very rare to see it I see it sometimes on flyers for underground parties I see it sometimes in uh, uh, might end up in uh, some <coughs> gallery or, or something like this uh, but I, to be honest I've never seen a pure pixel art exhibition or pixel art uh, show anywhere, at least not in the museum. Um, uh, outside the demo scene, uh, like I mentioned before, uh, Pixel Joint is a really great place to, to uh, see people creating pixel art outside the demo scene, because even if a demo scene is a very creative uh, wagon for, for people that want to do non-commercial, party, uh, groundbreaking things. Uh, the Pixel Joint has really taken pixel art uh, to its uh, limits and, and really focusing on, on uh, what you can do with uh, the limitations of pixel art. So, uh, so I can't give you any uh, information on uh, where you can see pixel art outside the demo scene because I don't know. Uh, you can see it here, <laughs> in top of it, <laughs> which I'm very happy <coughs> to see. And uh, if uh, the future is right, it, uh, this might be the first in uh, many other pixel art exhibitions. And I, I hope that uh, even if I made those books, it's not uh, the books that's in the center, but the pixel art has an art form that should be uh, that should be glorified or <laughs> presented. Yeah, it can be, for sure. Uh, uh, what you basically use are, are uh, indexed palette. Um, uh, Later this week, I, I had a good uh, fortune or, or possibility now to, to make a workshop for the Tampa University here in Tampa. And I will uh, go through the different methods or tool chains that could be uh, done. Uh, but just using uh, Photoshop in order to create pixel art from a photo is not so easy as it might uh, seem. Uh, one method you can do if, is, for instance, if you have uh, if you have an idea about the outcome of a picture, you can set the palette for 16, 20, 30 colors, and then force your object on, into that palette. And Photoshop will uh, do its best to in, interpret it and, and, and convert that image. But uh, like I said before, uh, even if you're really lucky and you do those kind of uh, things, automated two chains, it will it will become uh, it will never you not using a traditional Photoshop at least <laughs> will not be very pleasant to look at in any land. And uh, I think pixel art is is a bit like illustrating you you take away some details from nature or from photo and you maybe enhance eyes and, and uh, character features and, and uh, make things that you, you want to enhance or, or make important in the face or in the posture or in the scenery. You use the, 
your your skills or your style or your technique to to pixel rows. And uh, yeah, I guess it's it's a bit uh, too uh, complicated for me to go through now. But uh, uh, at least uh, Photoshop is a great tool for uh, working with photos, as it is it so Photoshop. But uh, it can be. I mean, it's it's also a good tool where even if you pixel something, you can throw it back in Photoshop. You can stretch it. You can test stuff, and you can work with it. But um, my experience is that uh, it it doesn't it doesn't take care of the the pixels on the level you you are you want or you feel. I uh, never used it, uh, but it's it's a great way to to begin with the shades and the highlights and, and make the the, uh, the volume of the picture and then adapt colors. It's a traditional technique in normal art and uh, especially on those uh, communities where people come in from the art <laughs> art faculty. They might be very comfortable or experienced with you working with both methods. So I'm uh, I'm not uh, how you end up with your pixel art. That's up to you. Uh, I would say the same answer applies to an oil painting. How you end up with that painting is up to you. But there are lots of ways you can. Uh, you can pixel in layers, and you can uh, you can pixel in, in shapes and shapes and colors, and it's really uh, a matter of uh, uh, matter of personal taste. But it's uh, it's uh, kind of a accepted method, and I've seen it a lot on, on different sites that uh, like basics one, uh, like. Steps to one, two, three. How to make pixel art? They, they do it in black, black and white. So um, it works for them. I guess it works for many other. So yeah. Okay. Thank you so much. Uh, I think we super, uh, could, could give class a uh, big hand, a big applause. It was really. <laughs> So, so, uh, nice.